everybody, it's Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Today we're going to talk about the astrology of Michael Jackson. And this was a requested chart done by asked for one of the one of the um, listeners or subscribers. So thank you for suggesting the chart. I am going to go ahead and um, check in with the technology, make sure we are up and running for this broadcast. If you can hang with me there for one moment and it looks like we are up and running and let's see here how is everybody doing are you guys hanging in there with the eclipses and everything that's been going on these days I know it's been a tough time so hopefully everyone is okay and there we are we are up and running okay let us begin so as I may wait for a few minutes for people to trickle into the webcast and um, if you're here feel free to say hi hello and um, if you're watching this after the fact I will put time time stamps in the uh, description box below for you to kind of watch the video according to the topic that I am talking about okay and I've called the webcast um, The Astrology of Michael Jackson, A Tale of Moon Saturn. And you can see up on the screen right now, I do have a quote by Michael Jackson where he's talking about success and how success can actually um, bring loneliness and separateness. And when we talk about, you know, feeling lonely or feeling separate from people, that is very much like a moon saturn type of an issue and he does have a very prominent moon saturn square in his chart so we will be talking about that and i think i'm going to go ahead and share some of the history of michael jackson while we're waiting for people to kind of pop in and let me go ahead and bring up the chart is in the background there and I'm sure everybody knows who Michael Jackson is. He's one of the most like culturally relevant figures of our time. And there is a lot of controversy surrounding him, which, you know, I will touch on in this webcast, although I am not going to be, well, I may give a little bit of personal opinion on things. I always try to say I, I'm not going to do that, but knowing me, I probably will. <laughs> so... Um, but anyway, Michael Jackson was born on August 29th of 1958, and he died June 25th in 2009. And he was known as the King of Pop, and he was widely regarded as one of the most significant cultural figures of the 20th century. Um, he influenced artists across many genres during his four-decade career. His contributions to music, dance, fashion, along with his publicized personal life, made him a global figure in popular culture. Um, through stage and video performances, he popular, popularized a complicated street dance moves, such as the moonwalk. And there you can see him moonwalking, where he's going backwards like that. Isn't that cool? The moonwalk, which he named, as well as the robot. And um, as the eighth child of the Jackson family, Jackson made his public debut in 1964 with his older brothers, Jackie, Tito, Germain, and Marlon as a, as a member of the Jackson Five. Jackson began his solo career in 1971 while at Motown Records, and he became a solo star with his 1979 album, Off the Wall, and he had videos like Beat It, Billie Jean is Not My Lover, of course, Thriller, everybody knows Thriller, and um, his music is credited with breaking racial barriers and transforming the medium into an art form and uh, used as a promotional tool. Um, he had subsequent albums, Bad and Dangerous, okay, and um, my favorite Michael Jackson song was Smooth Criminal, and if you guys have a favorite Michael Jackson song, you can certainly leave that in the comments, the old... Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? <laughs> it's my favorite, favorite Michael Jackson song. But anyway, so um, in the 1980s, Jackson became a figure of controversy and speculation due his due to his changing appearance, his relationships, his behavior, and lifestyle. In 1993, he was accused of sexually abusing a child of a family friend. A lawsuit was settled out of civil court. 
Jackson was not indicted due to lack of evidence. In 2005, he was tried and acquitted of further child sexual essay allegations and several other charges. The FBI found no evidence of criminal conduct in either case. In 2009, when he was preparing for a series of comeback con- concerts, Jackson died from an overdose of per- propofol, propofol, if I'm saying that right, administered by his personal physician, Conrad Murray, who was convicted in 2011 of involuntary manslaughter for his involvement in Jackson's death. His death triggered reactions around the world, creating an unprecedented surge of internet traffic and spike in sales of his music. Um, Jackson's televised memorial service held at the Staples Center in L.A. was estimated to be viewed by more than 2.5 billion people. He is one of the best-selling music artists of all time. Okay, so there he is right there, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of him with his brothers in the Jackson 5, how he started out. Um, He was the youngest member of the Jackson 5, and he was had the amazing voice and was an amazing dancer. And that's his father, Joe Jackson, who uh, was rumored to be very abusive and um, horrible to Michael during his childhood, but is also responsible for kind of strong arming the Jackson 5 towards success and pushing them really hard um, to dance and sing perfectly. Um, Here's a photo that we'll talk about later in his life when Michael Jackson was holding his child and dangling his child over a um, like a, the side of a ledge of a motel four stories above the ground and that happened in 2002 and so Jackson did have three children of his own Michael Jackson did and this is his third child that he dangled over this ledge covered the he- the baby's head with a blanket and then dangled it and we will talk about later about the baby dangling incident and the astrology of the baby dangling incident because um, it did create a lot of outrage towards him when that happened. Um, Here's one of the headlines from when he dangled the baby. Michael Jackson dangles baby from fourth floor balcony in Berlin. Um, Here's him with his wife Lisa at the time, Lisa Marie Presley. Um, They were married for a couple of years. He married her during the height of the allegation against him for abusing children. So that was, and the marriage did not last, but but anyway. And then um, that's just a page there. And then here's a picture of him earlier in his career. He would wear the flashy clothes and the glove and all of that. And here's him later in life when his appearance had significantly changed and um you know people oftentimes very made made very mean and rude comments about his appearance and also about the color of his skin which was almost um you know like nearing white at the time of his death now he did have a skin disease according to jackson that caused his pigmentation to be off um and then here is a picture we're going to talk about later when he was doing a we are the world song benefit with um, Willie Nelson, Lionel Richie, Tina Turner, Cindy Lauper. Here he is right here and um, he did this benefit, this huge benefit to raise money um, for poor families in Africa. So we will talk about that later too, but just some pictures there from Jackson's life to talk about kind of where he comes from and what type of life that he was having. So Anyway, we are going to go ahead and get into the chart. Now, let us begin. So first of all, just a couple general comments about Michael Jackson's chart. Now, I think that his chart does tell a story about becoming too self-indulgent in our fantasies or in our pain. Now, you know, all of us do this as humans, we can become very self-indulgent in holding on to certain fantasies or uh, very self-indulgent in constantly wanting to cater to our own pain. And as human beings, we really have to watch our tendencies to become very self-indulgent in those particular areas and make sure Um, that we're living in reality because it can really stunt our maturity and stunt our growth as human beings if we are 
you know, totally indulging in fantasy and totally indulging in our pain all the time. And the fantasies that we're making up in order to dull our pain, even when we know they might be something wrong there. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that because there is that side of his chart. And as you can tell, Michael Jackson is a Pisces rising and he has the moon in Pisces rising on his ascendant. Um, because he is a Pisces rising, Jupiter is the ruler of his ascendant. And that Jupiter is in a conjunction, an out of sign conjunction with the Neptune in Scorpio. And so because he's a Pisces rising with the moon rising, he is very sensitive. He is very emotional. He is very dreamy. Um, and then he also has the ruler of his ascendant in a conjunction with Neptune as well. And so there is that escapism into fantasy and there is that indulgence in fantasy. And we'll talk about why he was so prone to indulging in his fantasies. A lot of it had to do with his childhood and we'll talk about that as we go throughout the reading. But just right out of the gate, we can see that he has a very uh, fantasy prone type of a chart or wanting to live out fantasies and um, we know that he had a big ranch called the Neverland Ranch that was like full of you know amusement park games um, it had animals it had a huge movie theater it had a big pool it was like a place for kids to go and have fun it had like trains going around the park like it was just this massive amusement park uh, entertainment kind of place for kids to go and have fun and Jackson himself was like a big kid in many situations and so we will talk about that whole that whole thing okay and um, I just wanted to point out the sect of the chart and we talk about that in astrology is a chart either being a day chart or a night chart and a night chart is when the sun is below the the descendant and the day chart is when the sun is above the descendant and the sun is about four degrees below the descendant so we would say that this is a night chart and that venus is the most positive planet and saturn is the most negative planet and we will be talking about that saturn a lot now keep in mind um you know if this chart is off you know even a little bit that because his son is so close to the descendant there that, you know, switching between day or night chart could, it could be off. But just to say in this case that the sun is below the descendant. So we are going to read that as a night chart. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the planets that he has going on. So right away we can point out the Mars and Taurus. We know that Mars is debilitated in Taurus and Mars is squaring the Venus and the Mercury. So we will be talking about that. Um, we can also look at this Mercury in Leo retrograde. Okay, so he's got the retrograde Mercury there. Um, and we can also see that his Saturn is in Sagittarius. And uh, Michael Jackson was born August 29th and Saturn had just turned direct um, in Sagittarius five days before he was born. So he was born very, very close to a Saturn station and that's going to become important as we look at the impact that that Saturn is having on his moon and I mentioned earlier that Saturn is in a square with his moon um, Saturn is creeping up on that moon so Saturn is in the superior square to that moon and it is the most malefic planet in the chart so that Saturn squaring his moon in Pisces is going to have a very strong effect on him and we'll talk about what that must have been like for him and what he experienced as a result of that okay so let's go ahead and move on and I want to just start with um, his ascendant so we are going to begin talking about his ascendant in Pisces now, a couple things I want to bring up here, too, is the very complicated pattern. You know, before we get into his ascendant in Pisces, I just really want to point out this Mercury, Venus, Uranus um, configuration here in his sixth house. OK, and um, we're going to end up talking about this little get up over here quite a bit. And also his son, Pluto, 
conjunction in Virgo. So I just want to point that out too because I think it's important. And this is a very complicated area in his sixth house here, along with this moon square Saturn are two of the most complicated areas of his chart, in my opinion, especially because the Mercury and Venus is squaring the Mars and um, the Saturn is squaring his moon. So it's, it's a very complicated, these areas of his chart are highly complicated and are going to, um, you know, be interesting to look at. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and talk about his ascendant in Pisces. So when we talk about ascendant in Pisces, I'll read you guys some of the qualities of a ascendant in Pisces. So Pisces ascendant, a person could be softer, feminine, passive, sensitive, compassionate, receptive, artistic, creative, timid, pretending, okay, or liking to pretend, make believe, dreaming, ultimate understanding, generous, charitable, and non judgmental. So, those could be some of the good things about being a Pisces rising. Some of the more negative aspects about being a Pisces rising could be somebody who is elusive, somebody who um, is a swindler, is manipulative, someone who is always playing the victim all the time, who is in a poor me martyr complex, someone who has a savior complex while also being very immoral at the same time. Um, Pisces rise, Pisces rising, Pisces is associated with poisons, opium, addiction, chaos, clouds, carelessness without thinking, being confused or acting confused as a crutch when you know better, okay, and seductive martyr routines. So those could all be negative aspects of being a Pisces rising. Now, Michael was very sensitive and um, very feminine in a way too, very artistic. And, um, you know, it was hard to tell with him. And I think, you know, one thing we can point out is the ruler of his ascendant, um, that Jupiter is in the eighth house. So there was so much about Michael that was a mystery. But he was also incredibly childlike. And sometimes when he would give interviews, he'd be, I have a quote from him, that I think is very Pisces. And he would say, I'm still fascinated by the clouds in the sunset. I was making wishes on the rainbows yesterday, you know? So it's like, I'm still fascinated by looking at the clouds and the sunset. And I was making a wish on the rainbow yesterday. I mean, that is very, you know, ruler of the ascendant conjunction, Neptune. That's also very Pisces rising, moon in Pisces, like, very much like stars in your eyes kind of dreamer. I was looking up at the clouds and I was like, whoa. You know, this type of energy is a very Pisces type of a thing. Uh, Pisces can have a very dreamy, artistic, sensitive side. They may have a love of the abstract as well. And I think that's even increased because, like I mentioned, the ruler of his ascendant is in a conjunction with a Neptune. So that's even more and more of that kind of like dreamy, vibing out kind of energy. And um, I think he's even more and more sensitive on top of that because of his moon being in his first house in Pisces. Now, the moon in the first house can talk about a need for wanting, for warmth, for belonging and for nurturing from your mother or from family or needing to nurture your dreams or feeling nostalgic about a beautiful dream or a beautiful memory or wanting to create beautiful dreams or beautiful memory. Um, it can also indicate where people um, withdraw when they get very hurt or they get very sensitive or they can feel very picked on or very like emotionally, um, especially with the square to Saturn, um, you know, any harshness of any kind is going to be like um, interpreted as somebody being really, really mean to them. And, you know, he would oftentimes break down and cry in interviews and um, he would talk about wandering the streets at night and looking for someone to talk to and being alone and um, you know, just crying because it felt like no one wanted to talk to him. Like, you know, just a very like 
sensitive aspect to him and so we can see that particularly with the moon in the first house like family mother uh, family memories all these things are going to be very important um i also think that it's interesting that this moon rules the fifth house of creativity and children now the fifth house in astrology like i said it has to do with games um you know talent dancing artistry children having your own children is the fifth house creativity art drama dancing music you know and he has the ruler of his fifth house rising in his first house which you know his whole life he um you know was always like dancing and singing and you know he loved playing games and um he put an amusement park in his house like you know total fifth house kind of like with the moon there wanting to create memories of fantasies and adventure and you know kind of like a fantastical world where it's you're like a peter pan and you never grow up and everything is fun and games and um, but I also, so there is that side of him having the moon rising and the moon ruling the fifth house, but I also think it speaks to his incredible talent as a dancer and as an artist as well. Now, the fifth house, particularly um, in Vedic astrology, has to do with past life credit, and the ruler of the fifth house is always positive. And um, the fifth house brings, um, you know, positive karma, positive past life benefit. And so, you know, he has this incredible talent that comes out of him as a child. You know, he's eight years old in the Jackson 5, like dancing the robot on the center of the stage, like, you know, singing and dancing and, and just everything that the fifth house is in that way. And I also think it's really interesting that he popular, popularized a dance called the moonwalk. And um, because the fifth house is the house of like dancing and expressive dancing and creativity, um, in the ruler of his first house, like he comes up, well, he didn't make up the moonwalk, like that dance was existed before him, but he really popularized the moonwalk. And that was like his signature move. Now, um, I just think it's funny, he has the moon rising in the first house, which rules his fifth house of dancing and art, and he becomes associated with moonwalking. Now, um, the moonwalk is a famous dance move where you create the illusion, um, or you create the appearance or illusion that the dancer is gliding backwards while, tr while trying to walk forward. And it's in that creating of the illusion of moving back backwards while moving forward that creates the whole sensation and the whole visual illusion of someone like moonwalking and you know Pisces is so much about that illusion or creating that illusion and creating an illusion through dance or through the movement of his feet which is also very Pisces is because Pisces rules the feet like creating illusions through dancing and moving the feet through a moonwalk very moon in Pisces in the first house and keep in mind that the symbol for Pisces is the two fish swimming in different directions so it looks like his feet are moving in two di different directions which creates the illusion of the moonwalk and so I mean I think that moonwalk was made for him to popular popularize and it was made for him to do and it really did become his like signature move so I think that that is very interesting too um he jackson also made a quote that said my mother is wonderful to me she's perfection which in astrology um we would look to you know the moon to how someone feels about their mother now the if moon is mother and the moon is squaring saturn i also wondered you know maybe was his mother depressed you know did she have issues etc but he really loved his mother a lot where he didn't have as positive things to say about his father now when we think of the sun representing the father this sun in virgo is in a conjunction with pluto so an obsessive controlling perfectionistic father who would come down on him for every little thing that he did wrong where mother was this you know saintly wonderful perfection figure who probably also was very depressed as well um she had 10 i don't know that she was depressed but maybe i mean she had 
10 children of her own and they grew up in this little tiny house and um, her husband was you know very controlling and abusive and also cheated on her multiple times as well so I imagine the mother's um, you know the mother was very his mother was very close to him but I also wonder how her mental health was with the moon square Saturn and the obsessive controlling every detail of their lives father with the Sun Pluto conjunction in Virgo so um, we can already see, you know, the mother and father stuff kind of popping up in the chart there. And um, anyway, his mother was very religious as well. His mother was a Jehovah's Witness and um, was very religious. Now, as I mentioned, the fifth house is associated with play, recreation, video games, amusement parks, parties, finding joy, dancing, acting, children, our talents, cinema music and entertainers now i think it's really interesting that the public which the moon represents of course the public at large that the public feels so very close to michael jackson as an entertainer even after all the allegations and things that have come out so i think that that's really interesting too that most i mean we'll talk more about his you know issues with the public and stuff later but um you know basically he turned his house into his neverland ranch he turned his house into a dream fantasy for children okay and nothing says ruler of my fifth house of children and the moon in pisces being like a fantasy dreamland for children so um a lot of people questioned you know like michael's love for children and why he loved children so much and and we'll talk about that a little bit later but you can see like the fifth house does represent your children that you may have in this lifetime and just your attitude towards children in general now michael jackson did have children of his own he had three children of his own but he also had his attitude towards children was was very interesting in general but he was all about creating this home fantasy for children to come and visit him there and um, that's very you know moon in pisces ruling the fifth house in the first house i want to bring all the children to me type of thing um so anyway so some of michael jackson's you know he has the ruler of the fifth house of children rising in his first house and some of his quotes about children i'm going to read to you guys it says children are the face of god okay so that's a quote from michael jackson about children being the face of god um a next quote he said was if child if it weren't for children i would choose death i mean that with all my heart okay and um, if it wasn't for children, I would choose death, just children in general. Then he makes another comment. The innocence of a child to me represents the source of infinite creativity. Now, again, infinite creativity is a very Pisces type of a concept. And, um, you know, children represent to me, children in my first house in Pisces are a source of infinite creativity. Um, he also said, I would slit my own wrist before hurting a child. Okay. Um, he also said, when I begin to feel a little tired and burdened, children revive me. Okay. Again, the ruler of the fifth, fifth house of children squaring the Saturn. When I'm feeling tired and burdened, especially with Saturn being in a conjunction with his midheaven or career, when I'm feeling tired and burdened, children revive me he made another comment about children when children listen to music they don't just listen they melt into the melody and flow with the rhythm now melting into the melody and flowing with the rhythm is a very pisces type of a thing so children aren't just listening to the music they're melting into the melody okay and um you know he would take busloads of kids and bus them into neverland ranch um to his home like amusement park and um you know a lot of people said that he hung out now he was like a 45 year old man at the time like spending a lot of time hanging out with children and it's like okay that's kind of weird you know unless it's like your own kids and you're taking them to do things and you're hanging out with your own kids it's kind of weird 
to just socially want to spend all of your time with children as a 45 year old and um you know we're going to talk about the weirdness that was there and also the emotional maturity that was like very stunted in him i think because of his own childhood um but uh, I also think he probably hung out with children all the time. I mean, and, and again, I'm not being naive here because, um, you know, there could have been improper relations with children. I'm not trying to, you know, say that there wasn't or cover anything up by any means. Um, I'm just trying to show you guys the chart here because I think he probably hung out with children so much because he was depressed, lonely, and sad. Now, um, you know, Saturn is the ruler of his 12th house, and that Saturn is squaring the ruler of the fifth house of children. So it's like, I bring children to me, to my house, because I'm depressed, lonely, and sad. You know, now, is that healthy for a 45-year-old to be spending all their time with children, all that are not their own, like... For so you know for social purposes not for like their job or they're a teacher or whatever but just like that's what they want to do is spend all their adult time with children that are not their own it's anyway I'll, I'm not gonna go off on that but I will leave it we're gonna talk more about that but I will leave it up to you guys to decide that and publicly I think it made people uncomfortable you know the 10th house is our public rep reputation and um, his love of children definitely like damaged his public reputation um, or his public reputation was damaged by his love of children. So um, we will take a look at that a little bit later. Now, um, it's interesting because Michael Jackson said growing up that, or not growing up, he said that his most biog biographical, biograph biographical <laughs> if I can talk he said his most biographical song that he ever wrote um, was a song called childhood from the movie free willy 2 and um, the song is about longing for nostalgic memories that were taken from him because of having to grow up too soon and basically it's a song he wrote for the movie free willy 2 and the lyrics go People say I'm not okay because I love such elementary things. Now, what, is, what does that mean? Because I love such elementary things. Is it because I love, people say I'm not okay because I love children or because I love playing or because I love games or amusement or anyway. But it says people say I'm not okay because I love such elementary things. It's been my fate to compensate for the childhood I've never known have you seen my childhood i'm searching for that wonder in my youth like pirates in adventure dreams of conquest and kings on the throne now you know searching for something that isn't there is very saturn and sagittarius now his own childhood was basically taken from him because of you know his abusive father and they always had to practice after school every day they couldn't hang out with other kids it was practice 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 all the time like working hard towards a dream saturn and sagittarius but then later in life um going searching which is very moon and pisces square saturn and sagittarius like going searching for lost memories and lost dreams and lost nostalgia that you didn't have when you were a childhood and, um, you know, when as astrologers or as people inter interested in astrology, when we're looking at, you know, indicators of childhood, like what was someone's childhood like? How was their childhood? If you were to ask yourself that question and look at a chart and wonder about that, the first thing you would probably look at is the moon because the moon definitely like... Um, signifies family you know childhood history um, moments when we're at our most vulnerable and the moon signals what we need when we're most vulnerable like what do we need and um, you know when he's most vulnerable he needs to escape into fantasy and be generous and give all these kids you know time to wander around neverland you know all the things that he he needs to discover all his lost dreams and memories from childhood 
And um, so we would look at the moon. Now, if we see the moon squaring Saturn and we're talking about our childhood, we could talk about a childhood that was like overly serious, a childhood that was overly religious or overly strict. Um, I have a good friend of mine who has the moon square Saturn and, um, you know, she grew up in a Mormon household, very strict and um, Saturn in her fourth house and moon in the first house, very, very strict childhood and um, didn't get to do like a lot of the normal fun things that you would do as a young girl growing up because she grew up in this very restrictive environment and you know Michael's mother was a Jehovah's Witness so they didn't celebrate you know holidays they didn't celebrate birthdays they didn't do any of that stuff and um, and because he was always working I mean he was in the Jackson 5 when he was eight years old and so he said every day after school they would come home and they would practice and rehearse for four to five hours at a time five days a week there was no going outside and playing with the neighborhood kids. There was no like having sleepovers and hanging out with friends. Like there was none of that. There was no like whimsical having of fun. It was all work, work, work. And um, and we can see, you know, with that moon square Saturn, like, you know, having this childhood that was destroyed um, because it was very like you know dire it was very and a lot of sometimes people with moon square saturn can grow up very poor or in very meager circumstances and um michael jackson you know they did grow up very poor to begin with um he was the eighth of 10 children and um they lived in a very small tiny house and the dad worked at the steel mill and the mother worked part-time at sears and and they didn't have a lot of money and um, you know very meager and restricted and religious and just working hard all the time um, you know and then after they got famous it was just work 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 travel 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 you can also see that that moon is in a quincunx with Uranus as well too so really once they got famous with that Uranus and Leo once they got famous they were just traveling all over the place and touring all over the place and um, so with that, you know, again, even when they got famous, it wasn't a normal childhood. It was just, you know, a lot of like living all over and traveling all over. Hi, Cringe. Cringe says, with the Saturn in the 10th, isn't it like he was told he would able, let me actually move so I can see your comment a little bit better, Cringe. With the Saturn in the 10th, it's almost like he was told he would be able to do the things he wanted to do if he was successful also high yeah cringe i totally see your point with that and i do feel like you're right like his father was really pushing them to be successful and it's like if you work hard there's a very strong work ethic in his family and um you can see the ruler of the fourth house of family is this mercury and it isn't a trine to the saturn so it's like my family knows how to work hard or we're a very hardworking family. Um, and, you know, the ruler of the fourth house is also in a conjunction with Venus, which is a very artistic and hardworking family. And we'll talk about that a little um, later, too. But yes, also hi to you, Cringe, and thank you for jumping in. And um, yeah, with the Saturn and Sagittarius, like searching for something you know and being disappointed I think you know moon Saturn can also be like being let down and being disappointed um and and that aspect of that too so um anyway yes thank you for pointing that out and um as we know this is a night chart so Saturn is the most malefic planet and the moon is the most sensitive um planet in the chart for sure and it's also one of the most um, important planets in the chart and I remember asking my Vedic astrology teacher just out of you know and and she's she's um, in her early 70s and she's been practicing astrology for like 50 years you know um, and I asked her just like out of curiosity what do you think is one of the most like difficult aspects in a chart and she mentioned 
um, moon Saturn aspects. And I would, I, I could see her point with that. I can definitely see that because it can create feelings of restriction and loneliness. And, you know, Saturn also is a planet that makes us have to grow up early because of responsibilities. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people might thought Michael Jackson was a lot older than eight years old when he was in the Jackson 5 because of his talent, because he had like epic talent. They thought that he was much older and Saturn often indicates where we have to be, you know, moon Saturn can be like where we're white knuckling it through our entire childhood and we have to grow up really, really fast. And, um... You know, yeah. And I also wrote down for those of you that have moon Saturn, um, I'm sure you have some moon square Saturn, moon opposite Saturn, moon conjunction Saturn. I'm sure you have some very interesting stories about that. And, um, you know, another combination of having a hard childhood would be moon Mars. That could be a parent that has um, impulse control issues, anger issues, uh, physical abuse issues in the family. Um, people screaming and yelling and, you know, slamming doors and handling um, anger in a very bad way, like a walking on eggshells type of a childhood, um, where like a moon Pluto childhood could be a childhood where it's very destructive and there's a lot of betrayals and abandonment in your childhood and it destroys your ability to be able to trust authority figures and um, like your whole home is destroyed or ruined. And so for those of you who have difficult aspects with moon Saturn, moon Pluto, or moon Mars, um, you know, like, I'm sure you have some really harrowing stories um, that, you know, maybe not every single person. I know I have moon Pluto in my chart, and that is very true for me as far as the betrayals and the abandonment and the lack of being able to trust uh, people around you in childhood so yeah I mean we can the moon is a very very sensitive and important planet in a chart and when it is being hit by either Saturn Mars or Pluto um, I I think there is problems you know there's definite problems in the childhood the other thing that I would look at for indications of a childhood gone wrong um, would be the ruler of the fourth house because the fourth house represents happiness and family and the foundation in our chart. I would also look for planets in the fourth house and the ruler of the fourth house. In the um, branch of astrology that I study, uh, Renaissance astrology, the fourth house ruler is associated with the father as the foundation. So. I would also be looking for indications with the fourth house ruler about how the father was and how the foundation of the family was. Edwina says moon opposite Saturn here. Ah, uh, yes, Edwina. I, I totally feel, yep. Namaste, my friend. Uh, Edwina says that she has moon Saturn, moon opposite Saturn here and had to grow up way too soon. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, moon Saturn, you don't get much of a childhood. You don't get much of a luxury of having one um, because there could be, you know, poverty. There could be issues with having to step up and um, raise the siblings or a parent leaves. And, you know, there can be a lot of rejection as well with moon Saturn. Um, mother could be out of commission. I remember I had a friend of mine in high school um, whose mother, like, you know she was highly highly depressed and my friend would have to get her out and like throw her in the bathtub and and like get her dressed get her own mother dressed and like throw her in the bathtub to get her ready because she just couldn't even and my friend ended up having to you know pay money to help support her mother as a teenager growing up so yeah like moon saturn is is a tough one that is a very very tough one i would also say you know moon and capricorn um, with, that's very like, you know, square Pluto or something like that, or, 
Um, those are tough ones. Yeah. And Moon Neptune cringe. Yes. I, I left out Neptune, but I would also say Moon Neptune. You have Moon conjunction Neptune. And the way I look back on my childhood is like a fever dream. It was never violent or anything. It was just emotionally turbulent relationship with mother. Yeah. Cringe. Definitely. I left out Neptune, but yeah, I would also say Moon Neptune is a tough one too. Um, Moon Neptune can be addiction issues or codependent, um, codependent mothers and, um, you know, really confusing situations and also, you know, parents that have addiction issues as well. So, yeah, those are tough ones. And, you know, the fact that Michael Jackson had such a rough childhood, um, you know, really. And I also think Moon Saturn, particularly in his case, like stunted him um and he was like even as a 40 year old adult he was like talking to him was like talking to like a child like talking to like a 10 year old child so I do think sometimes like it's so bad that it like emotionally like stuns stunts people from like it's like you're forced to grow up earlier earlier but then there are like even for me I know that like you know, growing up in a very, like, abandoning environment, that there are certain things that you're not taught to do as a child that, as an adult, you have to learn how to do on your own, and that can be very embarrassing, and some people are still very childlike, you know, and I think Michael Jackson, like, it was that way for him. Some people can work through that and become adults, but other people really struggle with that, and you know, it's weird for him because he did have immense talent, but at the same time, he was very troubled and, um, you know, lonely. And I think Moon Saturn can also feel very, very lonely at times. And um, he also had a terrible time sleeping. Now, keep in mind, Saturn is the ruler of the 12th house. Now, the 12th house in astrology does have to do with sleeping and our ability to sleep. Moon Saturn also is a problem with insomnia because the moon is the planet of sleep. And when you've got the moon squaring the ruler of the 12th house and it's Saturn, um, insomnia is a major problem. Now, Michael Jackson had insomnia almost his whole life. He's also a Virgo sun, you know, tendency to overthink and all of that. But he had insomnia his whole life. And part of the reason that he had so much propofol propofol in his system when he died um, and it was essentially poisoned when he died is because his quote-unquote doctor was giving him fatal doses of propofol to make him fall asleep because nothing would allow him to sleep and he was trying to sleep before touring and he couldn't and you know it's pretty much the reason why you know he was on all that propofol and why he ended up passing away is due to his issues with insomnia now again the doctor was found um, guilty of involuntary manslaughter and and there was a lot of problems with the doctor that gave him that fatal dose but at the same time you know his issues with insomnia were horrible and um, that is a very moon saturn thing too having issues with insomnia Um, The other thing that Michael Jackson would talk about in his um, interviews and things like that were was anorexia and um, the fact that sometimes he would just totally stop eating when he was emotionally upset. That is another moon Saturn thing. Anorexia is definitely trouble with food, trouble eating, uh, not wanting to eat, not being interested in food. Um, turning away food Um, also moon chiron is another thing associated with eating disorders and things like that so when you see moon chiron or moon saturn there can be problems um, with eating and not having enough nutrition and not having enough food and saturn is definitely a planet um, of starvation you know where you can literally like the moon saturn can make you feel very starved from love and affection But it also can, because the moon has to do with food and what we eat, it can also talk about not eating and not getting enough nutrition. Um, My same friend that has the moon square Saturn, she also has had, you know, um, issues with being able to eat because of food, you know, food issues. So, 
you know, like, yeah, I, I mean, sometimes it's having to have moon Saturn can mean you have to have a very restrictive diet because of health issues or sometimes, you know, just not eating when you're upset. And that was definitely the case with Michael Jackson. And he talked about Elizabeth Taylor having to, who's another Pisces, by the way, Elizabeth Taylor, um, would have to feed him or or basically spoon feed him things to eat because when he would get very upset, he would refuse to eat and he wouldn't eat. Um, and a lot of it had to do with, you know, his appearance and um, his father often attacked him and attacked his appearance and the way that he looked. So the not eating could be a way to deal with those issues. And um, we'll talk more about his father as we go on and what's going on with the father in the chart okay but his father would oftentimes nitpick him about his appearance um son representing father son pluto and virgo nitpicking him on his appearance to the point of breaking down and then him not wanting to eat so you know very sad life for michael jackson i mean incredibly like successful and but a very sad life and a very sad person and a lot of that is the moon saturn stuff and um yeah so we can definitely talk about yeah moon saturn dreary restrictive loveless religious um conservative emotional needs not met in childhood type of issues and um yeah so Oh, Cringe says there's a clip of him when he was in the Jackson 5 and he called himself the skinniest Jackson. Yep, I saw that too, Cringe. And they were all going along like all his brothers were saying, I'm the most handsome Jackson or I'm this. And he's like, I'm the skinniest one. And um, Jackson would, you know, Michael Jackson would definitely try to like control his appetite. And when he would get sad, he wouldn't eat. And so, yeah, you can see how that goes now as i mentioned um the fourth house is also an indication of family or foundation the ruler of the fourth house um which you know the ruler of this fourth house is mercury um indicates the father and what the father's temperament was like now right away you will notice that the mercury is retrograde at 25 degrees leo and in a square to mars so seeing that, um, even if I didn't know Michael Jackson and he just came to me for a reading, I would have asked him about a sad childhood um, and, you know, if at times he neglected his own needs for work or um, if he had a very disciplinarian father, you know, the ruler of the fourth house, Trine Saturn, um, that would get very angry at times. The ruler of the fourth house being father square the Mars, okay? Squaring the Mars in Taurus. Um, now keep in mind that, you know, if father is represented by Mercury and Leo, retrograde square Mars. So Mercury square Mars in and of itself could be a very angry and belligerent father who says, who hurdles, like very, hurls insults at the child you know and when we think about leo and taurus leo and taurus um especially when involved with a mercury mars square very stubborn very angry um very selfish me first jealous behavior putting his foot down father putting his foot down and not letting up you know a very aggressive violent father and uh, Michael Jackson talked about how his he did have a very abusive childhood and his father, if they would get one note wrong or they would dance incorrectly one step in one way at all, he would get out his belt and whip them. Um, and that, you know, he used to get sick even as an adult when his father would come around. Now, of course, you know, he has a lot of siblings and a lot of his siblings have talked about the father and sometimes said it's true and sometimes said it's not true. I mean, I don't I, I think it's I'm guessing it's true. And looking at the chart, the chart supports that with the abusive father. Now, um, the other thing that I would say, too, is that the father is also in a conjunction with the ruler of the third house of the siblings. And so you could see how here the father may side with the siblings and then create issues 
with the siblings, um, amongst the siblings, because we've got the father and the siblings in a conjunction together, squaring the Mars in the third house of siblings. So that's a very complicated situation. And it's been very weird um, in interviews because look at the father represented by Mercury in Leo retrograde. So the story of the father is always flip flopping in all these interviews. Like sometimes the siblings are saying, oh, he's abusive. He's, you know, he was mean. He was, you know, all of them say he was very strict, right? Father trying Saturn, but it was because he was pushing us and he wanted us to be successful. Um, but it's like constantly the siblings are the story is constantly changing about the father and the family all the time um like latoya jackson wrote a book that the father had sexually abused her ruler of the third house of siblings venus square mars my father with with my father ruler of the fourth house my father sexually abused me my sibling is saying that my father sexually abused me now the chart seems to kind of indicate that but um latoya jackson kept flip-flopping on her story so she would say because she married an abusive husband he forced her to say that you know so there's all these mercury retrograde things and you know the ruler of the fourth house of family being this mercury and leo retrograde is a pro it's a big problem because nobody can get their story straight about the family and what actually happened in the family, which is oftentimes very true in abusive families, um, where the the story keeps flip flopping and changing, and each sibling has a different version of what happened, and there's no consistency. That is a sign that there is a problem with abuse in the family. Now, Michael Jackson himself has said that. His siblings were like his father, okay? Ruler of the fourth house of father in a conjunction with the ruler of the third house of siblings. My siblings are like my father, okay? They both, to solve problems, they like to get angry and belligerent at times. Square the Mars, okay? My father and my siblings square the Mars. When my, when my siblings get mad, they like to get angry and violent or, you know, bullying or things like that. But... Michael Jackson said, I'm not like that, though. When I get mad, I turn things on myself. Or when I get upset, I self-punish myself. And you can see the moon squaring Saturn. I self-punish myself. Whereas the father, the family, and the siblings are in a square to Mars. So he probably felt fundamentally different than his siblings and his father in the sense that they're more aggressive or more outwardly like aggressing in situations where he is not like that he doesn't want you know he runs away from that and when he's angry he punishes himself now um you can really see that in the chart i also think um that well we're going to talk more about the father later so i don't want to give too much away on the father but I also think the father probably triangulated the siblings um, over money because look at the father, the Mercury and Leo retrograde in a conjunction with the third house of siblings squaring Mars, which is the ruler of the second house of money. So I am guessing that that father also would um, triangulate the siblings over issues having to do with contracts and money and and things like that so i that's what i see in the chart now again when it comes to the father the story in that family is always changing and always flip-flopping all the time mercury retrograde in leo representing the father but the chart tells the truth in the sense that the father has a temper my father is square mars sun conjunction pluto the sun being the father my father is a controlling freak who basically you know whacks out on every little single thing that we do wrong and beats us okay so that is very much ruler of the fourth house square mars now um again like i mentioned michael jackson's nature very different than that very moon in pisces escaping into a fantasy world type of a thing um now, I also had to wonder 
if um you know the father being represented by the mercury in leo retrograde so if we think about mercury and leo retrograde mercury has to do with contracts and negotiations and in leo it has to do with a show business family ruler of the fourth house okay mercury retrograde in leo uh, my father is negotiating all of these contracts okay for my siblings and i with in a conjunction with the siblings square mars and there's a lot of fighting yelling screaming and disagreements about the money and the contracts and so you can see that in the chart right away and um, it's kind of interesting when michael died he did not leave his money to his siblings or his father okay and you can see michael's money is the ruler of the second house okay so the ruler of the second house is mars square the siblings and square the father when michael died he did not give any of his money to his father or his siblings he gave the money to his mother and to his children and so i think that that's very interesting with the money and the siblings and the father and the contracts and the mercury retrograde and the negotiations and and all of that and i bet that could get very ugly at times with the father and I was reading something about Joe Jackson, the father, and how he would get very, um, you know, I mean, at the same time, he would really fight for them with Motown and to get better deals and to get better record, you know, get better royalties. Like he would really fight for them to get better contracts and things like that. But I also can see where the father may stoke, um, you know, conflicts and anger with the siblings and Michael surrounding money. And I think my like, you know, observations about that are true because he didn't leave any of his money to his father or to his siblings when he died. Okay. So interesting there. Very interesting guys with the money and the father and the siblings and the contracts and just everything going on there. Um, Mercury and Leo retrograde representing the father in plain terms can represent contracts for performers or having to negotiate contract for performers and square mars like i said can indicate heated discussions debates contracts negotiations for performance royalties i also think his father was very angry and took his anger out on his siblings and and on michael because of his station in life because he didn't have any money now again joe jackson his father had 10 children and he worked at a steel mill and to support the family and i mean they didn't have a lot of money but you know mars in taurus especially in taurus can talk about jealousy and envy um and greed when it comes to money and when it comes to material possessions and i think the father ruler of the fourth house square mars was probably very angry in life because he didn't have the monetary possessions and the you know abundance and all of that that other people had because of his situation and i think he drove his children like that out of anger and when they messed up he would take his anger out on them and so I think that that is very evident in the chart, regardless of how the story just kept changing so many times over and over when it came to the father. Um, so we've got that. Now we talked about, um, you know, the control, the anxiety, the perfectionism with the sun in Virgo in a conjunction with Pluto and the way his father was with that. And there's a quote from Michael that says, when I get upset, I stop eating, sometimes until I'm unconscious. Okay, and again, with the sun square Mars, some, or the moon square Mars, the, sorry, the moon square Saturn, when I get upset, I stop eating, sometimes until I'm unconscious, moon in Pisces, okay? And um, I think that that is, is interesting. Now, um, there's so many things that we can say about this configuration with 
Mercury, Venus, squaring Mars. There's so many things to say about. I don't even know if I'm going to get through them all, <laughs> you guys. Um, but there's so many ways we will talk about that, okay? Now, um, I am going to talk more about his family. But let's switch gears for a minute and let's talk about the baby dangling incident with Michael Jackson. So um, Michael Jackson did have children of his own and I'm just gonna go ahead and stop my annotations there. Michael Jackson did have children of his own and um, I'm gonna show you guys the baby dangling picture. So um, this is Michael's third son, which he named um, Prince Michael Jackson the second but then started calling him blanket because he was always putting blankets over his children's faces to protect their identities now this is a picture of Michael Jackson in 2002 holding his own child and showing it to reporters and hanging the child over a balcony like high up in the air now when this happened in november of 2002 there was like international outrage like people are like what is he doing like taking a child and you know he puts a blanket over the head so that people don't know who the child is and is hiding the identity of the child but then is dangling it over the edge for reporters to look at very bizarre and people legitimately pissed off like why are you dangling your child over you know over a four-story balcony window to show reporters so people were pretty upset about that and it was all over the news michael jackson dangles his baby from fourth floor balcony in berlin it was in berlin when it happened and people were like this is like they kept calling him a wacko and a weirdo and um you know it is really weird to do that and we can see the moon okay so again let's go back to the moon that rules his fifth house of children okay and so the fifth house also tells us about our children and will we have children and how will our children be and how will we act towards our children that's all fifth house stuff the ruler of his fifth house is that moon and it is in a quincunx with uranus um and the quincunx relationship he has uranus and leo so i'm showing off my child with the blankets over its head and i'm overly excited and i'm doing weird shit and hanging my child over a balcony now that is very ruler of my fifth house quincunx uranus and leo and um you know pisces is a good sign but i have to mention like I'm not trying to pick on the Pisces people here, but you know, sometimes Pisces energy can lack common sense because it's opposite to Virgo. You would say Virgo is more of the um, sign where it's like, you know, common sense and, you know, breaking things down bit by bit and editing, editing things down and pointing out all the details where sometimes now keep in mind mercury is also the planet of common sense and mercury is debilitated in pisces so again you know pisces energy sometimes when it's whacked out or being influenced by uranus or being de debilitated by saturn or something like that there can be a real lack of common sense and most of us would not take a child and dangle them over a balcony like common sense would just tell you that's not something you should do but you know i think he was like showing off his child and he's like look you know uranus and leo look at my child right but then he covers up his child with a blanket because he doesn't want people to see his child's identity son pluto i'm hiding the identity of something okay i don't want you to see the identity but i am weirdly dangling my child in this precarious you know strange situation over this balcony and so um you know i think his moon in a quincunx to uranus also talks about the weird life that his own children like he gave his own children because he started calling his third child blanket and then everybody was making fun of him because of that and you know it's interesting because so he ended up changing his name to bg but um his child now in 2023 so his child who he dangled over the um ledge 
was um, now later in life gave an interview in 2023 and said this about this about his childhood. His son, Michael Jackson's son, said, my whole life has been unconventional, okay? Ruler of the fifth house of children in a quincunx to Uranus. My whole life has been unconventional. And he understands why his dad's wacky parenting choices to keep their faces hidden and covered and why his dad was doing it. But it's still very weird. And he just said he's had a very unconventional life. So, um, yep. And Cringe says, I think Pisces uh, struggle to understand other people's perceptions of them or don't want it to take it into consideration in the moment. Yes, Cringe. I would agree with you on that. And um, I mean, I'm not trying to, like we said, we're not trying to pick on the Pisces or people that have, we all have a spot in our chart that is related to Pisces. I mean, everybody has this house that is ruled by Pisces. So, you know, or Jupiter. So we're, you know, we're not trying to pick on Pisces, but they're like, I agree with you, Cringe. I think there can be a lack of common sense with Pisces at times. And yeah, like, it just and they may not care that much about other people's and you know perceptions of them um, or they might be very very sensitive to people's perceptions of them but not understand why people don't have a good perception of them and um, yeah so I can I can see that going on and like I mentioned earlier like Pisces can also be kind of careless at times as a negative thing and when you've got the moon um, with in a difficult relationship to Uranus like that it's like taking weird actions that most people wouldn't do but it's like he does them anyway and I think that that's very Uranian and um, moon Uranus can indicate extreme excitability and lack of common sense when it comes to children when it has to do with the moon ruling the fifth house of children especially you know Uranus and that extreme excitability and um, Michael Jackson's quote of why he hung his child over the balcony like that is he said I made a terrible mistake I got caught up in the excitement of the moment I would never intentionally endanger the lives of my children okay I got caught up in the excitement of the moment that is very Uranian like I'm so excited I want to you know Leo Uranus and Leo I want to show you my child or show off my child but not really because I've got a blanket over the face of my child so I'm still hiding their identity Sun Pluto um, but I want to show you my child so here you go but it's completely inappropriate and um, you know the moon represents safety and comfort and so I do think they're, you know, and a lot of people were questioning his parenting and saying, is this guy a good parent? Like, and you have to wonder, like, how good of a parent, how good of a parent he could be being so stunted into his own childhood and his own immaturity. And um, there was a story in an interview that someone said when she first met Michael, he was, this was like a record executive. She said, oh, he was very sweet. You know, this was like he was in his 30s, you know. She said, oh, he was very sweet. Um, but when he met me, he was very smiley and laughing and sweet and, you know, running around and being mischievous like a child. But he took my uh, pocketbook and he like dumped it upside down and like started laughing and she said what it struck her as is that you know basically like that's something that like kind of like a five-year-old would do and um even though he was like 30 it was like he was running around and acting real childlike like a five-year-old and um you know and and that's a little bit dangerous when you have like a 30 year old man or a 40 year old man or a 45 year old man because I don't think he really got out of that stage that thinks that like a child or thinks that they're a child because you know as an adult we have boundaries and limits and and we've got certain things that we will or won't do with children and and you know what I mean because we're we have an adult mind um, but she said, you know, he was very sweet, like a child and very childlike. But I just wonder, because he was forced to grow up so fast with that Saturn there, like he also 
on the flip side and this is very pisces and this is very confusing because it's like on one hand he had to grow up very fast on the other hand he's emotionally stunted and lacking in maturity and um you know people going to drop off their children that are complete strangers to michael jackson and just leaving him their children with him for days and days on end is kind of um crazy because i mean like if if this person is acting like a big child and has the mentality of a child then we probably shouldn't be leaving our own children you know unattended to around this person so that's kind of my argument around the confusion now again i mentioned earlier in the reading and that Pisces energy can also be people who, um, you know, Pisces can represent carelessness without thinking or being confused or acting confused as a crutch when you know better, okay? And so that is one of my sticking points with him because, and again, so much about Michael Jackson is a mystery and so much of it is just weird and we don't know because you know was he acting like a big child because or was he truly in his mind a big child and then doing inappropriate things with children the way that some children do with other children and not knowing that that isn't right did he do things like that in the first place um you know why was he walking around holding hands with someone else's child that he just met and didn't really know when it's not even his own child like and he's a 45 year old man um it's weird you know it is weird and with pisces it's hard to tell is it a act of oh i'm i'm just a baby child myself and i have the mentality of a child so i'm hanging out with children and doing childlike things um, there's a reason why like adults don't spend all of their social time hanging out with children that are not their own children you know there's a reason for that in society it's you know so it, it's it's a situation and honestly I have to tell you guys it does bother me I know he's been acquitted of the charges of um you know the abuse charges and the fbi acquitted him and whatever and he's been acquitted but there is something that bothers me about the situation because why just you know common sense why is a 45 year old hey you know what i mean i i i just to me because i'm almost 45 myself so i'm like there's no way i'm spending all my free time with chill you know just hanging out with children like you know children are great but you're not gonna like it's not my total social life to hang out with children so you know it's like does he have like a mental um you know does he have a mental issue of regressing into a child in in the sense of his mental health regressing into a child um or is it an act in order to gain exposure to children in order to hurt or abuse children so yeah I and I don't have the answer to that I don't know that mm -hmm. and I I think his chart is a mystery and certainly the public was not real happy with the baby dangling and um, anyway and you know the thing is is he's he's one of the richest men in the world at the time it's like you know maybe take some parenting classes right I mean maybe get a hint or a clue and take some parenting classes like if you if you grew up and had you know a very abusive childhood and and you don't know what to do and you just realized you did something that you shouldn't be doing and it's like i shouldn't be dangling my baby out of a window what am i doing you know maybe take some parenting classes i don't know call me crazy right maybe like i read up on what it means to be an adult and be a good parent like um you know so i do think there is an issue of lacking emotional maturity there and was it more sinister than that was there like a pretending you know like i'm pretending that i'm just this little child but underneath it i'm manipulating these children i don't know but the sun pluto conjunction in virgo doesn't exactly um 
make me feel warm and fuzzy inside when I'm thinking about him as an adult and maybe what he was trying to hide. I don't know. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, and it does make me mad to think about children getting hurt. So I'll, I'll, um, you know, I'll get off my rampage on that, but, <laughs> but, and it will come up later. It's going to come up later, believe me. But, <laughs> but I do think that that is a problem. Um, and you know, the ruler of the fifth house is representing his attitude towards children. It is in a quincunx to Uranus and Venus. So both. So it's like, you know, him having a weird love of children that other people find odd. Um, you know, Venus Uranus conjunction um, in a quincunx to his moon, which rules his fifth house of children. So I have a weird love of children, Venus Uranus, quincunx, the ruler of my fifth house, and people find it weird. And I do think people found it very weird. Okay, um, so we do have that. And um, also, too, the way that he had his children was different. And we can see the moon in the quincunx with Uranus, um, the fifth house ruler. He did have a surrogate. Um, mother for his third child so sometimes when we see ruler of the fifth house with Uranus things we have you know issues with um, you know can we could have like in in vitro or um, surrogates or different situations around how to have children and so I did think that that was interesting he also gave his children especially his third child a very like you know it's not a very thoughtful name I don't think um his his third child blanket he named him prince michael jackson the second and the first child that he had he named prince so he already used the name prince with his first child so why are you naming your third child prince michael jackson the second like i don't know like you already gave your first child that name like be a deer and give your child his own name like i don't know and then he started calling him blanket and um, like, you know, people started making fun of his third child because everyone was calling him blanket. And anyway, like just, you know, ruler of my fifth house of children in a quincunx to Uranus, like the way I raise my children is very weird. Even the names he gave his child was very weird. I a lot of people not really understanding that. And um Edwina Horn says, yes, I recall he had a painting of the Last Supper and he was in the place of Jesus hanging in his home. Edwina, I did not know that, but that is interesting. That it, thank you for sharing that. So Edwina said he had a painting at the, the Last Supper in his home and he was in the place of Jesus instead of Jesus. And, you know, let's not forget that the ruler of his ascendant is that Jupiter in Libra and it is in an out of sign conjunction with Neptune you know having a savior complex or having a Jesus complex yeah definitely Jupiter Neptune conjunction with Jupiter ruling the first house for sure and Edwina it reminds me of an interview or a dep during his deposition when he was being um you know, charged for, or he was being interviewed for a deposition during his um, child abuse, I don't know what to call it, allegation trial. Um, he talked about how he just kept laughing during it and just giggling and smiling during it. And I was like, why is he laughing and giggling during this? Okay. Like, and then second of all, when they finally give him a chance to talk, he starts talking about how, um, he started comparing himself to Jesus and how Jesus loved all the children and how he's like Jesus for loving all the children. And I was like, no, he didn't. No. Um, because Jupiter Neptune can be grandio grandiose spirituality. And Jupiter Neptune squares and conjunctions are sometimes pretty heavy in the charts of abusers and narcissists who are in denial about their behavior and are comparing themselves to the level of Christ-like figures and are making themselves out to be this savior of everyone um, while underneath it all they are abusing and harming other people 
and they're acting like they're floating on air and everything they do is magical and wonderful but actually underneath all their altruism and and humanitarian humanitarianism they're abusing people and um i've seen that one too many times with the jupiter neptune crap and i gotta i gotta say guys it really makes me mad um with that jupiter neptune crap now i'm not saying that everyone that has jupiter neptune in their chart is that way but some pe- people that could have Jupiter and Neptune could be very altruistic and humanitarian and loving and caring and giving everything they have to charity and all of that. Like, you know, but there are also people, Edwina, like you said, who who start to spiritually aggrandize themselves and um, like, you know, like they're the savior of everything and that they can that their fantasy is the only thing that matters you know of that and so Edwina I'm so interested that you brought that comment up and I did not know that he had a painting where he he was in the place of Jesus and it was hanging in his home I mean yeah that is just that's not that's not cool and you know what Edwina that kind of makes me feel like a lot of his like giggling and hanging and all of that was an act. I mean, that to me is is putting a real thorn in my side about, you know, his grandiosity and, and using the altruism and the humanitarianism as a way to cover up for what he was doing. Anyway, I will, I could probably, I could really go off on that, but because I can feel my blood pressure starting to rise right now as I'm talking. I'm like, oh no, I'm starting to get mad. Um, because that's the worst thing when people are try to pass themselves off as like some guru savior figure, but they're actually like hurting people. Um, yeah, no thanks. Um, but anyway, <laughs> before I really start to melt down here, <laughs> um, I'm like, ooh, I can feel my temperature is rising. Um, but um, before I really start to melt down, we are going to talk about how he was born into a family of show business and hard work. Now, again, when we think about our family, we think about the ruler of the fourth house as being our family. So that's that Mercury in Leo, and that Mercury in Leo is in a conjunction with Venus. So born into a family of show business, the Leo energy there, okay? Also born into a family of artists as well. Okay, with the family in a conjunction to Venus, like everyone in that family was artistic in some way. And into a hardworking family, this conjunction is in the sixth house of working hard, and it is in a trine to Saturn as well. So we are in a hardworking, artistic performance family that is working very hard. So we can see that in his chart with the family and the hardworking. Um, and you know we can see that you know his siblings are a part of that too because venus is ruling um the third house there with the siblings and so the siblings are all wrapped up in that performance art family and of course you know he is um you know he he performed with his siblings in the jackson five now again i see this also as because it's in his sixth house it it wasn't that fun i mean it it's fun and they're getting attention but I also think it was a lot of hard work or it was very stressful too because the father was such a perfectionist and the father um, was you know like pushing them so hard the father squaring Mars okay that it probably wasn't always that fun for him it was probably very stressful and being in that show business family the interesting thing is if you watch videos of the jackson five man are they talented they are like you know dancing and singing and performing so freaking hard and um you've got that very artistic family with the family in a conjunction with venus and then uranus there like just when the jackson five it was like whoa like watching their videos Um, they've really created some timeless art. And we see um, Venus and Leo in a trine to Saturn. And many times hardworking, um, successful artists do have Venus-Saturn contexts or they do have Venus-Trine-Saturn. 
uh, very hardworking, disciplined artists. And I think that, you know, his family was kind of full of that energy um, because it is in a conjunction with his fourth house of family. So, you know, that is a positive thing in his chart. And as we know, Venus is um, the best benefic in the chart. Um, as this is a night chart so lots of talent lots of hard-working entertainers in his family him and his brothers and all of that and um, I just want to make a, uh, a distinction too because I'm talking about um, Jackson's Michael Jackson's you know work in the Jackson 5 and how talented he was he he was I want to just make a distinction because I think sometimes when people have immense talent or they're really good at something we assume everything about them is good or we assume goodness on that person when they're extraordinarily talented now um, just because somebody is extraordinarily talented and is amazing and hardworking and amazing artist and timeless art and all of that doesn't mean that they're essentially a good person or that they're doing everything life in life everything right in the in life they may just be really talented and um so i want to point that out too because i know i just went off on the child stuff with michael jackson and all of that now I, it seems like i'm talking good about him i just want to draw that distinction because somebody can be really talented and come from a really talented artistic family ruler of the fourth house with venus trying saturn very hard working artistic all of that um but it doesn't mean that like they you know there could be other problems that that person is having so obviously you know we can have that in life sometimes and um you know two different distinctions right and um anyway yeah so his father had you know them all practicing as artists and working really hard and as the jackson five i mean i think you guys probably all know a b c one two three baby you and me all of that <laughs> with with uh, the Jackson 5. I mean, they have some really cute songs, some really good songs and fun songs and art that has endured over time. But again, um, the father and the siblings are square Mars. So the father pushing them relentlessly, pushing them, um, you know, to become what they were and really taking away Michael Jackson's joy in his childhood along with that. And... Um, but yeah, real workhorses in his family, um, disciplinarians, all of that going on with the trine to Saturn. Venus Saturn, oftentimes like Venus trine Saturn or Venus with Saturn can often indicate quality art that endures over time. So that's a positive thing. Um, but it's not all fun and games. You know, the conjunctions in his sixth house, it is very stressful for him um to keep all of that up and what's interesting i read a story that when they were practicing in their house in gary indiana they were making a lot you know they would make a lot of noise like dancing and singing and practicing and their neighbors would complain and make fun of them and say that they weren't going anywhere um it's so interesting because when you think about neighbors neighbors are our third house represent our third house and so um, are associated with the third house and we see that mars in the third house so and then we see venus squaring mars in the third house venus is also the ruler of the third house so the ruler of the third house is squaring mars in the third house talking about the pissed off neighbors that would get so mad when they were dancing and singing and practicing um and i think that that's kind of funny because it's often an association in astrology that we miss talking about um the third house and neighbors and like what kind of neighbors we have and if they're mad at us or happy with us or whatever but growing up the family would really piss off the neighbors <laughs> so and they they would make fun of them and complain about the noise and um a lot of people also said that Michael Jackson's voice, because uh, he Michael Jackson was the voice of the Jackson Five when he was younger. A lot of the moguls in these entertainment industries would say, "Oh, when Michael goes through puberty, you guys aren't going to be able to perform anymore. His voice will change." All of this, and Michael Jackson had a very hard puberty. 
um, he had a, he said he had a lot of acne and he said that his dad used to call him a pizza face and tell him that he had a fat nose like you know that probably caused him to become like anorexic and do all of those different surgeries and things like that um, his dad basically insulting the way he looked now if when we see Venus squaring Mars that can talk about a very difficult puberty or a very difficult adolescence especially because the third house is associated with the adolescent time in our life or like the teenage time in our life and so we can see like Venus is the planet of beauty and how we feel about our physical appearance and you know he did have a very bad time going through puberty and Venus square Mars anyway is just an indication of having a hard time um, especially for a man too because Mars is really the the like masculine manly athletic kind of a principle and um, his Venus is square Mars and that Mars is de debilitated in Taurus and so you know having a hard time going through puberty having a hard time like reaching manhood um, you know his dad insulting his appearance I mean you know Venus in Leo um, is very like you know performative beauty or needing to look nice to be on stage or needing people you know people admiring the way you look on stage but then having dad come and like insult the way he looks all the time probably destroyed his self-esteem and made him very depressed the moon square Saturn okay and um, you know somebody insulting someone's beauty is very Venus square Mars anyway and um, a lot of people did insult Michael Jackson for the way that he looked and not just in puberty but also like later in life I wanted to show you guys um, I want to talk a little bit about like all the plastic surgery and things that he got now Michael this is kind of a picture of how he looked look his nose his dad always was telling him he had a fat nose so he kept getting nose surgeries time and time again and he had he kept saying he didn't have surgeries but um, his mom made a comment about him being ad being addicted to plastic surgery though and other people have said that he he said on interviews like oh I've only had one um, you know and whatever you want to do I'm not a person that is going to yell at someone for wanting to have plastic surgery I'm not that type of person but like you know he kept it seems like with Michael he kept trying to fix imperfections about the way he looked based on you know feeling bad because of the way his you know dad would insult him but a lot of people in his lifetime um, did insult him not only like in the press but his father and everything Venus square Mars would insult him for the way that he looks or say that he looks like over he's overly feminine or you know these types of things and um, yeah and you can also see like with the Sun Pluto conjunction in Virgo like he had and you know the Sun rules his his sixth house of health and it is in that conjunction with Virgo and I wrote something down about like Virgo energy and I wrote something about like you know if you get out the tweezers and you start tweezing your eyebrows and you're trying to get your eyebrows absolutely perfect but then you go overboard with it because you're just tweezing like crazy and then you realize oh my god I like tweezed all my eyebrows out like I think that's very Virgo type of energy and you know he did have a lot of surgeries and you know Mars is the planet associated with surgery and Venus is the planet associated with beauty so you know having a lot of surgeries um, you know with the Venus Uranus conjunction like people making fun of him because he looks weird or he looks different and um, he also has like a skin condition that makes his skin look different which is very Venus Uranus as well and having to go on stage with the Venus and Uranus and Leo and be in front of all of these people when you feel like you look ugly or people are making fun of the way you look 
And um, so there was a lot of that going on with him. And, you know, the sixth house is also like the house of health and um, like treatments and health treatments. And, you know, I think he did have a lot of alternative beauty and health treatments there with the Venus and Uranus conjunction in Leo because he kept trying to like fix his appearance or he kept trying to change his appearance. And it never really looked quite right and um, keep in mind that the sixth house is also a house where we put in a lot of work but we may not see a lot of result and the ruler of his ascendant is also in a quincunx to that Uranus so it's like I keep changing how I look or I keep changing my appearance um, with the Venus Uranus and I, I still look weird you know like I keep like having a bunch of surgeries and altering things but I don't look any different and you know like a Virgo with a pair of tweezers who just starts tweezing like crazy I realize that my eyebrows are completely gone you know um, so I think that there was a lot of that going on with his appearance as well and because his father was like really mean to him and because he had a very bad puberty experience I think that also created the Venus Uranus um, you know problem that he had and just feeling like people are watching me all the time like everybody sees me and sees what I'm doing but I, I'm very noticeable to everyone but I don't like it because it makes me feel weird or it makes me feel bad about myself because I look different you know, so I do think that there is that going on in his chart as well with the Venus Uranus conjunction, like some of the weird relationships he had, like with Lisa Marie Presley, he was married to her for a couple of years, short marriage, kind of people feel like maybe he just did it for the press or the news or to, you know, they were just like really in the spotlight together with the Venus Uranus and Leo there. Um, but the marriage wasn't very successful, you know, the Venus square Mars and, um, but anyway, just kind of a, um, a troubled love life as well. And people always thought the marriage with him and Lisa Marie Presley was like kind of weird. Um, I want to show you guys the picture of it. It looks kind of awkward and, um, I do have a picture of it. Here's, and they're holding hands here, but. It's a very weird way. It's not, it looks like he's kind of like gripping her hand like that instead of just naturally holding it. And I don't know, it's just kind of weird. And so I think people were a little weirded out by his relationships and, um, you know, that was a thing too, okay? And um, so let's see what else we have going on. And, um, yeah, the Venus square, the Venus with Uranus, like I keep trying to change my appearance, but it doesn't really do anything for me. And the more I go under the knife, Venus square Mars, the more it keeps getting messed up. And um, anyway, and so, yeah, let's see what else I wanted to mention about that. Yeah, he would often say that people say, I don't like myself and it hurts. And I think that that is, um, you know, very much the Venus Uranus in the sixth house. Like people talk that I don't like myself. Also, the moon is in a quincunx um, with Venus too. People say that I don't like myself and I'm always trying to change myself and the way I look and it hurts my feelings you know moon and moon and Pisces so there really is that aspect there for him too um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about one more thing before I start going a little bit more um, into his death and let me see here so we talked about his appearance and he's always changing his appearance and um, I also wanted to mention, you guys should watch it if you haven't seen it. It's basically the video of him recording We Are the World with like Cyndi Lauper and um, Huey Lewis and um, Bruce Springsteen, Lionel Richie, all these people. They recorded this big song um, for 
uh, for Africa to give like relief to, to poverty in Africa. And Michael Jackson starts like singing his part of it. And then right after that, I think it was Huey Lewis and Cindy Lauper who jumped in and they're like way out of key or they're not singing very good. And you get this Virgo kind of look on his face where he's like, like, what are they doing? And I just thought it was so Virgo. Um, I mean, let's keep in mind, right, that he is a son in Virgo and um, and a perfectionist. And he talked about that as a performer, how much he would practice and what a perfectionist he was. And it was kind of funny when I was watching that We Are the World video because these other singers start coming in after him and the look on his face is just so Virgo, like horrified, like these people are off key, like this is wrong or bad. And it kind of made me laugh because I was like, that is a very Virgo reaction to people coming in off key and <laughs> doing stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I had to bring that up to you guys. And let's see. Also, there's just some, he is very eccentric as an artist in general. There is a story, and again, Venus, Uranus, conjunction in the sixth house. So Michael Jackson like loved animals, and he had a lot of animals. And of course, the sixth house represent like you know pets and animals and things like that. And he had a lot of animals on Neverland Ranch. Um, and there's a story about him and Freddie Mercury trying to record together. And um, Freddie Mercury didn't like him because he brought a llama into their recording session and tried to record with the llama in the studio. And Freddie Mercury was like, what the hell? <laughs> so I think that that's very, like a very eccentric artist is very Venus Uranus, like bringing a llama into the studio. And then people are like, what the hell, you know? Um, so I thought that that was, the llama story was kind of interesting too. Now let's go ahead. I'm moving into my, um, you know, closing portion here. And I want to talk about the Jupiter-Neptune a little bit more, okay? And not just the Jupiter-Neptune, but the North Node in the conjunction with Jupiter. So as we know, Michael Jackson has had a huge career. We look at um, the ruler of the 10th house, which is uh, going to be the Jupiter as well. And that Jupiter is in a conjunction with Rahu. So he, you know, and Rahu oftentimes, or the North Node, often indicates fame. And so he has had a massive, massive, like, career and a really, really big career. Um, and he's been very, very famous. And oftentimes, you know, having a big, famous career is very much Jupiter, Rahu, um, you know, Rahu in the conjunction with the ruler of the 10th house. So having this big massive career like he did and um <laughs> cringe says that video is so funny his dad's voice was probably in his head lol yeah i cringe i thought that that video of him singing we are the world with all those people because i mean his dad was such so strict with him on hitting every note perfectly and doing everything perfectly like people just jumping in and singing like way out of tune and everything you could just see like the virgo horror on his face like you know, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that video. And um, but yeah, so he has this very big, famous career with the Jupiter Rahu. But the Jupiter Rahu is in the eighth house. So his career is, um, you know, it makes him feel very alone. And he still feels like very alone and separate from other people and. Um, you know, he gives a lot of money to charity through his career, but he also racks up a shit ton of debt. And as we know, the eighth house is associated with debt um, and monies that we owe. It's also associated, you know, with, um, you know, like the eighth house in astrology is also associated with poisonings, like old ancient attributions of the eighth house was, was associated with poisonings. And I think it's interesting like in his death he was essentially poisoned um because he was giving that pro propofol and um by his doctor he was essentially poisoned at the time of his death and so you know the jupiter neptune conjunction the jupiter in the eighth house being the ruler of his ascendant um you know 
dying of being poisoned is really interesting with the jupe because neptune is also poisoned rahu is also poisoned too and um the eighth house is associated with poisonings and so i was like yeah of course you know in his death he was basically poisoned um and given like you know the profile which kind of like put him into a sleep from which he didn't wake up from which is very neptunian as well and um so you know he had this really big famous career with the ruler of his 10th house in a conjunction with rahu or the north node um but at the same time like you know his whole career and even his death was just shrouded in mystery and um it took two years even after his death to charge that doctor um, that gave him that fatal dose with involuntary manslaughter. So even in death, like, you know, he is still like this very mysterious figure and just kind of this figure that no one can really figure out. And, um, you know, yes, he has this amazing massive career, but does it make it make him feel happy? He always said that he felt very alone and separate from other people, which is very eighth house. And, um, you know, Michael Jackson, too, also had, you know, in later in life become addicted to like painkillers and things like that. You know, ruler of the ascendant conjunction, Neptune, you know, addictions, addictive behavior, poisonings, poisonings on death, big, huge career, but not happy. You know, there's just a lot of significations there that ring true. So I really did want to key in on that Jupiter, Neptune, Rahu up there in the eighth house. Now, um, you know, something that Michael did, they said that in his lifetime, he gave over $500 million to charity and that he was constantly like, you know, busing sick kids with cancer to Neverland to let them see the animals and play and you know, all this type of stuff. And when we look at Jupiter, Neptune, Rahu, a question to ourselves could be is, is this a savior, a martyr, or a liar? You know what I mean? Um, or is this someone who thinks that they're a savior but is a liar? You know, I don't know. We don't know. And the thing is, it's in the eighth house. So it's a huge mystery. And we don't, I, I still feel like we don't have the truth. I mean, there is signs there of things that happened there are you know stories that are out there but nobody it's like everything is still a mystery nobody really knows the truth and um you know michael jackson like i said was known to give a lot to charity and to donate things and give people huge gifts to kind of win them over which is very jupiterian it's very jupiter rahu i'm giving jupiter rahu north node and libra i'm giving people huge gifts so that they'll like me because i feel like no one likes me moon square saturn you know so i'm giving people gifts but at the same time he gave so much of what he had to charity it's like you know he gave so much that he had to charity he almost found himself in trouble and at one point he was gonna have to lose the neverland ranch in a fire sale because he had so much debt on that neverland ranch you know and nothing says i created a fantasy land that is saddling me with total debt like a jupiter neptune conjunction with jupiter rahu in the eighth house of debt like i created a fantasy land of you know Peter Pan fantasy land but it drove me into debt and he almost actually lost the ranch um, because of all the debt that he had on it and then he just kept giving all his money away and giving all these things to charity um, he actually wrote a song called um, you know he was giving to the point of not having any money left and actually when he died his um, estate was like you know a half a billion dollars in debt and so it's interesting that he has the ruler of the ascendant with Rahu in the eighth house as the eighth house is the house of debt. And, you know, having really big debts because you're creating this fantasy land, Jupiter, Neptune, is is really interesting, I think. And, you know, showering people with gifts and all this kind of stuff because you don't think that they like you is also very Jupiter, Rahu, and Libra in the eighth house. 
And um, Cringe says, it seems like he didn't know either, like what the truth is. I, I tend to agree with you. And I don't, I mean, it's so crazy because, you know, the people that came out with the stories that he had abused him or came out with their truth later recanted and said, oh, no, that didn't happen. Now, did he just make really huge payments to pay off? um those debts you know jupiter in the eighth house did he make really huge debt payments to pay people off to keep them quiet like mm, you know um i don't know like and and why did everyone who came out and said that he abused them like go back on their story and why was there never any evidence discovered and what was really going on and I think that's very eighth house. Like, we do not know what was going on. We have no idea. Like, we're just sitting here like, what is the truth? I don't know. And um, that bothers me. I don't know about you guys, but it bothers me a lot because it's like, what is going on here? You know? And um, Michael Jackson made a song called What More Can I Give? And... You know, it's like he's giving away everything or giving everything to everyone. Um, what more can I give? Like, I think he almost gave so much money and everything that it almost like pretty much put him in the poorhouse, pretty much. Um, because his accountant said Michael was spending 20 to 30 million more per year than he earned as early as 2005. So that when he died, his estate was almost you know a half a billion dollars in debt so that is really interesting now i want to tell you guys some of the like you know charity things that he did because um cringe says it bothers me too he isn't the only celebrity like that too yeah cringe it really bothers me as well and um like we don't know and like i mean i'm always I'm always a person who's going to believe survivors. I'm not going to just go, oh, I believe the celebrity because they're famous. That That is never going to be me. I'm always going to believe the people that are the survivors telling their story. But what is going on? Like, why is everyone recanting? And um, like, what is happening, right? And I think it's just something we don't know the answer to and it's very irritating that we don't know all the answers to that and um, I'm going to share with you guys some of the charitable things that he did and you know ruler of the ascendant in a conjunction with Neptune and also Rahu the north node um, you know especially Jupiter Neptune like you know he did give a lot of money away and things and he did start heal the world foundation which you know, he wanted to bring everyone together for a socially conscious mission, which is, you know, very Libra. And it's very much like I have an artistic vision of bringing everyone together. Um, he did a lot of benefit concerts. Um, he would make visits to hospitals to visit sick children. He did the We Are the World single in 1985, which raised $63 million for poor folks in Africa. He would donate books to libraries. And, you know, Jupiter, Rahu, and Libra, socially conscious and giving, um, just giving everything away like crazy to the point of going into debt with it in the eighth house. And, um, yeah, so, mm, excuse me. So he relished in giving and, um, you know, but everything is a mystery. Even his death was a mystery for a long time. Like they were investigating his death. What happened? How did he die? Eventually that mystery got solved, but everything was a mystery. And um, his career was so big, Jupiter, Rahu conjunction, that he felt alone. And he wanted to share everything he had with other people, I think because he didn't want to be alone. And that's a very Libra thing of, you know, not wanting to be alone and wanting other people around you. Um, what I found interesting, too, is that when he died, like I said, his estate was almost $500 million in debt. But right after he died, his estate was earning uh, more than any other estate ever. For example, in the year 2016, his estate earned $825 million. 
Now, the eighth house does have to do with estate and death and what's after death and all of that. And so the fact that his estate, Jupiter Rahu conjunction in Libra, has still been paying out these massive amounts of money. His estate is act- estate is actually pretty powerful too. He he's his estate is like being watched over by Jupiter. And he's got like two really great estate lawyers who have sued everyone that's tried to say bad things about Michael Jackson and they've they've won most of the cases, I think too. And, you know, having Jupiter in his eighth house of, you know, estates and death and, you know, earning money from the estate with the Jupiter Rahu conjunction there, I think is a big thing. And the funny thing about it is that he was, like I said, almost half a billion dollars in debt before he died. But once he died, everything started selling like crazy and his estate actually made a shit ton of money and continues to make a shit ton of money. And um, yeah, so I think that that is really interesting with the Jupiter Rahu conjunction in the eighth house, death and mystery, life and mystery, what actually happened, what actually went on, we don't know, but the estate is still earning money. And um, yeah, so we have that. Now, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit. I talked about his addictions with the Jupiter Neptune with the addiction to painkillers and creating this big lavish dream and spoiling people with gifts and shopping and art and how it put him in a lot of debt in the eighth house there so we did discuss that and um you know jupiter neptune conjunctions can indicate grand idealism spiritual materialism forgiveness tolerance altruism humanitarian humanitarianism However, Jupiter-Neptune can also indicate looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, being very naive about life, being too generous, unwise financial decisions, okay, in the eighth house there, fantasies where you should get to have everything you want because you do so many beautiful and blessed things for other people, illusions and projections sold to other people to get what you want, out of something Jupiter Neptune okay and Jupiter Neptune could also be gaslighting with goodness and righteousness and um, you know so that's interesting with the Jupiter Neptune conjunction now having Rahu or the North Node there just enhances it all but Rahu also has the North Node also has a corrupting influence on Jupiter in the sense that Rahu can be very selfish and Rahu is like, I want what I want, what I want. And Jupiter is like generous and grand with everyone. But Rahu in this case could be the aspect where Jupiter is being corrupted by Rahu or by the by the North Node. And, you know, with the Neptune there, it's making everything very slippery or it's making everything very vague. And that is what I don't like about it. And, um, you know, the Jupiter-Neptune, I mean, with his ascendant in a conjunction with Neptune, I feel like what it's saying here is that Michael Jackson is a very confusing figure and it's hard to see him for who he really is. And perhaps as a society, we have a collective fantasy about him and we don't want to face the truth that maybe he was actually bad. I don't know, but that could be a thing. And the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction could say, I'm the victim, I'm attacked, I'm the martyr. And we already heard from Edwina where she said he had the painting in his house where he was in the place of Jesus. And in his deposition, he talked about comparing himself to Jesus in the way that he loves children. So to me, that is very like delusional and we do see that with neptune um this has all been such a mystery the truth is obscured by rahu or the north node um jupiter neptune people in a bad way can be people who are actively hurting others and are in denial about it okay and it can also be jupiter neptune can be coming up with spiritual justifications as a way to abuse other people 
Now, um, you know, Jupiter Neptune can have a very slippery relationship with reality and truth. And, you know, Jupiter-Neptune contacts are oftentimes seen in the charts of narcissists who use wholesale denial um, of their actions and the truth to stay in their own fantasy world at the expense of other people. And I talked about in the beginning about how as human beings indulging in being very self-indulgent in our own fantasies you know, as a way to deal with our pain can really get us into spiritual trouble in this life. And I mean, I see it in myself. That Now, again, I'm not hurting children or anything like that, but I'm just speaking about it in general and the fact that I can even see it in myself at times where I am too self-indulgent in my own pain. Um, I see it in my friends sometimes where they are far too self-indulgent in fantasies. You know, like we as human beings have a tendency to be at times very self-indulgent in denying reality or pushing the things that we want. And when you have a complete superstar like him who can literally buy anything he wants and get anything he wants and fix any problem with paying out money, then we have a person who can create their whole reality the way they want to and they're not having any limitations on that and that is very scary i think and for all human beings it becomes very scary when we become overly self-indulgent and thank god we have saturn to police us because if we didn't have something there to tell us like this isn't practical this isn't reality like this isn't the right thing to do like thank god we have saturn on our asses in a way because without that we would all be self and i don't know i don't know if we'd all be this way but we could all have the possibility of being self-indulgent babies who refuse to grow up and just want to indulge in fantasy land all the time and it's not healthy and I have to tell you guys sometimes too, as a tarot reader, I am not thrilled and about people coming to me for readings to indulge in fantasies. Like, you know, this is a side note away from this chart, but if I feel like someone's coming to me to a reading just to indulge in a fantasy that's unhealthy, I'm not gonna give the reading. Um, and, you know, I feel like a lot of, readers you know i'm on here as an astrologer and a tarot reader but i feel like a lot of readers sometimes will indulge people for their fantasies and i don't think it's healthy and i don't think it's a good thing and i think spiritually with jupiter neptune we can really indulge and you know the hard part of that is a lot of people with jupiter neptune or heavy Jupiter Neptune think that they're being very altruistic or humanitarian or that they're like giving everything they have to others but they're actually being very self-indulgent and selfish you know like I I don't know it just bothers me I will say that that's a very annoying thing I think in the spiritual community is indulging in people's fantasies when we know it's unhealthy for them and it's not good for them like that should not be a thing and I've even started to come down on and again I don't it's weird you guys because I don't again I'm getting a little personal here but I don't really feel like I'm a person who indulges too much in fantasy but I will say that I'm a person who's indulged in my life in my own pain too much you know and sometimes we can be very indulgent in our own pain and push away other people because we want to just sit there and indulge in our pain and I think that's bad too, you know? So I don't get off scot-free in any of it either, but I have to say, like, my inner soul rebels at the thought of people being so self-indulgent in fantasies that are not based in reality. Like, I literally cannot stand that. I can't. <laughs> it's, it's like, it bothers me you know a lot and I think you know when readers do that it's it's very disappointing because it's not healthy you know and I know we all do things that are unhealthy and um, 
like I said, I have my own healthy things that I've done in my life too. So I'm not like some, you know, winner who's standing in the corner like I have it all figured out. But this whole thought came to me this morning as I was like meditating on Michael Jackson's chart. And I'm like, you know, it really is dangerous to be a self-indulgent baby in one's own fantasies. And, you know, there is a benefit to a healthy kick in the ass and, you know, a healthy slapping across the face if necessary and saying, snap the fuck out of it. You know, like you're not a five-year-old child. Like if someone, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it would help Michael Jackson or not, but it's like, you know, it probably wouldn't help him because he suffered from abuse from his father. But at some point it's like, you know, we just, we all need a swift kick in the ass. Like we're not going to walk around like indulgent babies our entire life indulging in fantasies. It's not productive. It doesn't work, you know? Um, in anyway, sorry, I am going off today. I guess I have a little anger built up about that, but, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, and it's hard. It's hard not to indulge in your own fantasies. It's hard not to. It's it's so tempting. Just like it's so tempting for me to indulge in my pain. You know what I mean? It's just so tempting. But um, we really need those people in our lives who come in and throw cold water on us and slap us across the face a few times in a healthy way and say, like, get off your butt and and get with it now, you know? Um, so anyway, that is my spiel on that. And I don't know if you guys have ever had that issue <laughs> with yourselves either, but I just, I'm like, no, I can't handle it. Um, but anyway, so talking about, you know, the Jupiter Neptune stuff, it is a problem. And, you know, like I said, when adults are allowed to self-indulge in fantasies for too long, yeah, it creates a real issue. Um, and... I just want to close on the note about, you know, like his chart in general um, and just reiterate the point that like, you know, I don't know the truth. I don't know exactly what the truth is about Michael Jackson and who he was. I wish I knew. I don't know. I don't know if any of us know the exact truth of everything that happened and only the people that were there with him know that. And you know, it might not be any of our business anyway, because those survivors or those people have their own stories. It may not be up for us to tell them or to know them or anything. But um, at the same time, I think there are lessons that we can learn from this chart in the way that, you know, sometimes we, like I said, we associate talent with goodness or you know, we associate talent with being moral and being good. Um, we think that people who volunteer for things or give a lot of money to things or organize big benefit concerts or, you know, donate a bunch of things to Goodwill, like that these people are, that doing those actions makes them moral and good people and nothing about them can ever be questioned, you know. And I think that's a bit of a naive outlook, especially looking at Michael Jackson's chart, because he did do a lot of good. He did donate a lot and he did give a lot of things and he gave people, you know, really good music to listen to. All that stuff is great. Um, but sometimes as like fully mature adults, we have to be able to hold, you know, distinction of how things can be good and bad. You know what I mean? We have to hold contradiction. And I think that that can be very hard for people to do. I know it can be hard for myself to do too because we want things to be good and we want something to be good. But sometimes in life we have to be able to hold contradiction and say, yeah, you know, this person did all of these good things and they had all of this talent, but there may have been some things that they did that were bad you know that weren't good and hurt people and um yeah and and even beyond that there may have been things that were very very bad that outweigh the good that they were doing and I was talking to my boyfriend about it and we were just chatting and we were saying oh you know like all those I mean you hear about this all the time with like certain psychopaths or narcissists where they will like for those of you that's ever watched the show Dexter, he like 
you know, he's a psychopath, and but he's a good psychopath, right? Except that it ends up, everyone that's close to him ends up dying because of everything he's doing. Um, but he kind of like hooks up with this woman and is taking care of her children. But And he looks like he's so altruistic doing it. Oh, look at him. He married this single mom and, you know, he's taking care of the kids and they've got two kids together. Isn't that nice or whatever? But underneath it, um, you know, underneath it, he's actually lying to her all the time he has a double life she ends up dying because of you know his inability to like stop stalking people and killing people like you know he ends up like destroying her basically but on the outside he's using it as a front to appear as this very altruistic person and um it's very hard sometimes when we see that in like movies or stories or when we see a person that's like that because it's like okay what's going on like I feel like I like this person but I also feel that I don't like them you know so it can be a very confusing thing and um, I just wanted to add that and Cringe says I feel like the Aquarius Pluto is really giving us a wake-up call with celebrity culture and indulging in fantasy Cringe, yes. I 100% agree with you on that. The Pluto and Aquarius is like taking them down off their throne. I 1000% agree with you on that. And people are looking at celebrity culture like they're not really wanting anything to do with it. They're not really wanting anything to believe in it anymore. And they're not impressed with it. You know, like Leo energy is like being impressed with you know being impressed with all that and Aquarius is like no everyone's equal we're all on equal terms no one's better than anybody else and we're not really impressed with your stardom you know and I agree with you I think uh, Pluto and Aquarius is is a wake-up call for celebrity culture and indulging in fantasy and I just have a particular bone to address with indulging in fantasy too much because I think it's selfish and I think it's immature and I I don't like it Um, and but at the same time like we don't want to limit our imaginations and I think that's a hard thing too because we want to stay open and childlike and imaginative and we don't want to like ruin you know ruin the good time right like we want to we want to be imaginative and creative and all of that. So how to be imaginative and creative and without becoming, you know, like indulging, overindulging in unhealthy fantasy, you know, Um, and it's something that I really battle with sometimes just, you know, between anybody who listens to this video and now it's something I really battle with as a tarot reader, you know, like doing love readings and stuff like that, like. Because I don't, I always try to be as honest as possible in any reading I have because I really don't want to be indulging in, I really don't want to be a person that's on there creating more misery for somebody by indulging in their fantasies. You know what I mean? I feel like it's kind of like spiritually irresponsible to do that. And um, so I'm always kind of like trying to manage that within myself too. Um you know, while at the same time, like working in working on my own tendency to overindulge in my own pain. And I feel like there's kind of two people in the world, you know, Um, I feel like there's the people who like overindulge in fantasy and like going off into La La Land. And they're usually very creative, imaginative artist type people. And then there are the people who indulge in their pain too much and those are the reality Saturnian type people that are like you know I've been beat down by life a few times and I'm scooting around here in my cow my my cowboy boots and my Marlboro Reds and I got a real scratchy voice and I look like I've really lived life over here you know it's been a real a real shit storm or whatever <laughs> and then you and then you just start indulging in your pain you know it's very much uh you know, Saturn, Neptune kind of a thing. And um, it makes a lot of sense because that I've been thinking about this, you guys, because coming up next year, um, 
We do have a Saturn, Neptune. Well, over the next year or two, we've got a Saturn, Neptune, and Aries. When Neptune finally moves into Aries and so does Saturn, we're going to be living with Saturn, Neptune conjunction for a while here. Um, and this is coming up in the next year or two. And so, you know, this whole thinking of reality versus illusion and hardened reality where there's no imagination and there's no like you know everything's just tough and a challenge versus you know like um like imaginative like escaping from reality and i feel there's going to be a real clash of that with the saturn neptune um and aries you know conjunction but maybe maybe we'll all grow up a lot and maybe we'll all um you know maybe we'll all spiritually grow up a lot i don't know i hope so i mean there are things that i indulge in way too much and i've indulged in way too my li- way too much in my life too so my heart goes out to the people in the world who are indulging in things too much because i know how that is but um but i feel like we all want to be like better than that in a way too and we all want to like work on ourselves in that way Anyway, I have really gone off on a tangent on this reading, but I have really enjoyed um, talking with everyone today, and I really appreciate your comments so much, and thank you so much for enjoying the reading with me today, and if you do have any thoughts or comments, um, hopefully every everyone on the stream has kept their comments very, you know, nice and wonderful and respectful, so I really do appreciate that. I know that he Michael Jackson is kind of a because some people think oh he is like this amazing figure who's done nothing wrong and then other people are really you know disgusted by some of the things that they've heard and I know there's a big dichotomy there of everyone in between so thank you everyone for keeping everything um, respectful and wonderful and thank you again for joining me on my channel I really appreciate it and take care bye-bye now